Hello again, this is Mr. V. Hill. Today we're going to be talking about factoring polynomials. And so the idea of factoring here is that factors are, of course, things that are being multiplied as opposed to terms. Terms are things that are being added together. And so factoring, the act of factoring, is just rewriting a polynomial as a product of lower degree polynomials. And the way we're going to do this is basically by undoing the distributive property. This is the op opposite of simplifying. See, I, why, why in the world would you want to do the opposite of simplifying? I thought we always wanted to simplify everything. Well, we'll get to that. There's very good reasons for this. Um, but so, just to look at how this works, we're going to first look at this example here. 3x times the quantity x plus 4. Now, if we're simplifying this thing, we're going to apply the distributive property in here. Because if we have parentheses, this is not simplified. So simplifying, we would take this factor of 3x right here and we'll distribute it to both the x and the 4. Giving us, of course, 3x times x is 3x squared plus the 3x times the 4 is just 12x. Pretty simple. We know how to do that. We've been doing that all year long, pretty much. So in this direction, going from here over to here, that we call simplifying. Because we're doing the multiplication. However, what we're going to want to do is go backwards. It's kind of why we did all the simplifying is to really get the hang of this so we can undo it and go backwards really simple. So here, notice we have an addition. These are terms. Right, this is a polynomial. It's a quadratic polynomial with two terms, meaning it's a quadratic binomial. But we want to rewrite this as the product of two lower degree polynomials. And we want to go back over to here. Here we have a linear monomial times another linear monomial. That's good. That's what we really want in the long run. We'll see why in just shortly. So going from this thing back over to this one, that's called factoring. Okay. Simplifying is multiplying it out using the distribu distributive property. Factoring is going back the other direction, undoing the distributive property. Now, the most basic kind of factoring is called factoring out the GCF. We kind of, that's basically what we did in the last example too. There's more complicated versions, but we're going to start with just this one. So, suppose we want to factor this polynomial up here. It's a fourth degree polynomial with three terms, or a trinomial. So the first thing, we've got to find the greatest common factor of these three terms. And you all probably remember GCFs from way back when. Uh, but you just did it with integers. Now we're going to do it with polynomials. So the first step here is we need to actually find the GCF of these three terms. And so, just like integers, polynomials, or actually terms within a polynomial, you can prime factorize these things, or find their prime factorization. So 6 as prime numbers is 2 times 3. x to the fourth is actually x times x times x times x. Notice this is a product of four linear expressions now, because it's just x raised to the first power. And so this would be kind of the prime factorization of x to the fourth. 4x cubed, well, we could rewrite that as 2 times 2 times x times x times x. And 8x squared is 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x. Great. So now we want to look at the common factors in all three terms. And the product of all those common factors is going to be the greatest common factor, or the GCF. So notice here, in all of these factorizations, they all have a factor of 2. Therefore, a factor of 2 is going to go into the GCF. Okay. Now, these two terms also have a fact, another factor of 2 that they share, but there isn't another one in this guy up here. So therefore, we don't have another common factor of 2 in here. This guy's got a, common, a factor of 3, but there's no 3 in here. This guy's got an x in it, so here's an x, here's an x, here's an x. Oh, but here we got, they all share another x. 
So we just circle all of the common factors in all three terms. The product of these common factors, that's the GCF. So it's two times x times x, two times x times x, two times x times x. Each of these has essentially a two x squared in them. Wonderful. So that's the GCF for these three terms. The next step is we're going to factor out the GCF. And the way we're going to do that is basically what we just kind of looked at in the previous example. So first off, let's rewrite our polynomial so that we can see the GCF in each term. So we got 6x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 8x squared. We're going to rewrite this as, well, 6x to the fourth was our 2x squared times, well, what's left over? 3 times x times x, or 3x squared. 6x to the fourth is the same thing as 2x squared times 3x squared plus our 4x cubed was the 2x squared times, well, what's left over here? We got a 2 and an x, so 2x, plus the 8x squared, that was our 2 times x times x, or 2x squared, times what's left over is 2 times 2, or 4. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put parentheses around everything and notice our GCF in each of these terms. We really want to include the multiplication in them too, kind of. So now all we got to do is we have to factor out or undistribute that GCF. So it's going to dis undistribute this way. This is why I always had you guys drawing those arrows when you were applying the distributive property. Because now we can kind of get the idea of doing that in reverse. So this whole thing is going to be, well, we factored out the GCF 2x squared to the front here. You could take it out to the back. It doesn't really matter. And then we still got this being multiplied by what's left over. What's left over, we have this 3x squared there. We've got a plus sign, we've got a 2x, we've got another plus sign, and we've got a 4. And now we've factored out the GCF. It's that simple. If you want to check yourself to see if you did it right, well, simplify this. Multiply it back out and see if you get back to where you started from. 2x squared times 3x squared, that's of course 6x to the fourth. 2x squared times 2x is of course 4x cubed. And 2x squared times 4 is of course 8x squared. And that's factoring out the GCF. Now, the next simplest kind of factoring is we're factoring quadratics. And this is mostly what we're going to focus on, is just factoring quadratics. Um, we want to factor the quadratics when a, meaning the coefficient of x squared, is just 1. So again, let's look at an example just to show why we're going to do what we're going to do here. Here we have, this is what we call factored form of a quadratic. We have a linear times a linear. It's going to give us a quadratic. Degree 1 times degree 1 gives us degree 2. But, of course, when we're simplifying this, which is what we're going to do, is we just apply the distributive property. And again, so we distribute this x plus 4 to each of these terms. We might want to just make our life simple. Say this is plus negative 3, so we don't lose any subtractions or negative signs in there. So this is going to be x plus 4 times x plus x plus 4 times negative 3. I'll put that in parentheses just so we don't confuse this negative sign with a subtraction. Then, within each of these terms, we're going to distribute in this x here and distribute in this negative 3. Dis or distributing in the x, we got x times x is x squared, plus x times 4, 4x, plus negative 3 times x, 
plus negative 3 times 4, which is a negative 12. Okay, fantastic. Now notice, we're going to combine like terms here. So we have x squared plus 4x plus negative 3x is just an x, or 1x. I might even put that in there just so we can see that, yeah, what I'm really talking about is 1x. Well, you'll see why. Plus negative 12. Okay, so why did we go through all that again? Well, the basic idea here is notice what's going on. This negative 12, we got that when we had distributed this negative 3 back into this 4. So 4 times negative 3, that's what's giving us this negative 12. Also, these two terms got combined to give us this 1 times x. So 4x plus negative 3x, 4 plus negative 3 gave us 1. Notice where that 4 plus negative 3. So we add these two things together, that gives us the coefficient of x, or that gives us b. Notice a is 1 here, that's important. But when we multiply these things together, that gives us negative 12. So the whole idea here is that 4 times negative 3 gives us negative 12, but 4 plus negative 3 gives us 1. So going back this other direction, if we have this and we want to write it in factored form, what we need to find are two numbers that multiply together to give us c, the constant term, but when we add them together, it gives us b, the coefficient of the linear term. And that's all there is to it. You just have to be comfortable enough with numbers to spot those things. Let me show you an example going back the other way when we're actually factoring. Remember, this is simplifying. Going from here to here would be factoring. So here's the example. x squared minus 8x plus 15. Constant term is 15. That's c. b, or the coefficient of the linear term, is actually negative 8. Because right? this would be plus negative 8x. So what we need are two numbers whose product is 15, but whose sum is negative 8. Well, what's going to work there? Well, negative 5 and negative 3. Negative 5 times negative 3, that's of course equal to a positive 15, and negative 5 plus negative 3, that gives us our negative 8. And that's it. We just need to spot that. And once you do 5 billion of these problems, you'll start seeing that really, really quickly. So, the basic idea here is that x squared minus 8x plus 15, knowing these two numbers that work here, that's it. This is going to be x plus negative 5 times x plus negative 3. It's that simple. Or we could write this as x minus 5 times x minus 3 either way doesn't really matter. We can check this, of course, by just multiplying this back out and see if we get back to here. So, x plus negative 5 times x plus negative 3, multiply it out, x plus negative 5 times x plus x plus negative 5 times negative 3, distribute back in here, x times x is x squared, plus negative 5x plus negative 3x plus negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. And of course, we combine the like terms there, x squared plus negative 8x plus 15, which is, of course, this thing. So factoring here, x squared minus 8x plus 15, we write in factored form as x plus negative 5 times x plus negative 3 or x minus 5 times x minus 3, however you want to write it. doesn't really matter. So that's the idea. Just find two numbers that when you multiply them together, you get c, but when you add them together, you get b. That's the basics of factoring. And of course, here are some practice problems for you. Do those now and have them ready to show me when we come back to class. 
Thanks for watching.